My name is Pierre Antoine Bollet. I am a Louis XIII ambassador. Congratulations! You have in front of you a decanter of Louis XIII, the king of cognac. I would like to share with you the fantastic history of Louis XIII. It is truly one of the finest spirits in the world. The king of cognac, Louis XIII, was actually named after the king of France, Louis XIII, who was seen as the protector of cognac. What he did during his reign is that he actually allowed the producers in the cognac region to call their brandy cognac, making it actually impossible for anyone else in France, but also in the world, to call their product cognac. That's why the house of Rémy Martin decided to name his finest cognac after the cognac protector Louis XIII, Louis XIII. So now what is Louis XIII really? Uh, Louis XIII, of course, it's a, it's a cognac. When you open a, a dictionary, you see that cognac is a region it's also a city uh, before it's actually the spirit that uh, we're talking about today. So to be called cognac, you need to come from this area in the southwest of France called cognac. Louis XIII is actually uh, made from grapes that are exclusively sourced in one of the six areas of agriculture of cognac known as the Grande Champagne. The Grande Champagne is the finest, the most uh, sought after region within the whole Cognac region. Louis XIII is a blend of 1200 eau de vie. Those 1200 eau de vie have been aged in the cellars, the family cellars of Rémy Martin, between 40 and 100 years old. By that I mean that in this bottle here, you have 1200 eau de vie, the youngest is approximately 40 years old, and the oldest is approximately 100 years old. We use in the aging of Louis XIII a very specific type of barrel, which we call tierson. Those very old casks are actually no longer produced today. Um, they used to be produced um, over a century ago solely for boat transportation. Those uh, tiersons are unique because they have a thinner wall and they are also slightly uh, larger size. Only by using this type of uh, tierson, which uh, actually has a very slow, very soft influence on the cognac, we are able to age our eau de vie for up to 100 years. But this uh, decanter here, as all the decanters of Louis XIII that we ship around the world, is the result, it's the fruit, of actually four generations of cellar masters. The cellar master, so the person responsible to, uh, uh, for the creation of Louis XIII today, Madame Pierrette Trichet, she is the first woman to uh, become a, a cellar master of any major cognac house. She has to recreate year after year a recipe that is going to match the original taste of Louis XIII. And this is really her role. Her role is about carrying on that legacy and that tradition that started in 1874 with, with the first decanter of Louis XIII. You notice this um, very unique shape. And this shape is actually dating back from the Renaissance period. To be precise, from 1569, when uh, during a battle known as the Battle of Jarnac, one of the knights who was fighting lost on the battlefield his metal flask that he was carrying at his belt. About 300 years later, so this is about 1850s, Mr. Rémy Martin heard about this archaeological discovery that they made of this very flask that I was just uh, telling you about. And he decided to purchase this flask and use it as a mold to recreate a unique decanter to store his finest cognac that he had just uh, finished the elaboration. And this was how the first decanter of Louis XIII was created. It takes actually the work of 11 different craftsmen to recreate each decanter of Louis XIII. 
Each decanter is actually unique. It is uniquely numbered both on the bottom of the decanter and on the stopper. I should also mention that the neck of every decanter is made of 24 karat gold. In 1929, Louis XIII was served on the first voyage of the Orient Express. In 1935, Louis XIII was served to the first class passengers on the maiden voyage of the Normandy. In 1938, Louis XIII was actually served at the Chateau de Versailles in France. It was a reception organized in the honor of King George VI, the King of England. His daughter Elizabeth, the future Queen of England, was also present. And this reception, the Anglo-French bond was renewed with a toast of Louis XIII. In 1944, the General de Gaulle ordered a decanter of Louis XIII to celebrate France's first free Christmas after the Second World War. In 1948, Winston Churchill retired to Aix-en-Provence to write his own memoir. While down there, he was introduced to Louis XIII, which he found a little bit later to be the perfect company to his favorite cigars. I hope you enjoyed this Louis XIII moment and santé!